In this video, I will be demonstrating the molding process for Revo cycling shoes and Edgetech speed skating shoes. The process is basically the same for both with only some small differences. Be sure you have gathered all the materials needed. They are listed in the video description below and on the checklist that came with the kit. There are two ways to do this process. One is to mold yourself and the other is to have the customer up on a sturdy table with a helper doing the molds for the customer. Many will prefer this method, especially those with limited flexibility. However, in this video, I will be molding myself. This is because a large portion of our customers prefer to mold themselves or simply cannot find a willing partner to help. Molding yourself is definitely more difficult. Because of this, I chose to focus primarily on this method for this particular video. But this video is sufficient for either process and I will be cutting in some helper style video clips along the way. You may have noticed that there is an extra roll of plaster supplied in the kit. This is by design. Many times if an error is made, it will be on the first try. But you will learn so much on that first try, the subsequent efforts typically go much smoother. However, it is not uncommon for the first mold to go perfectly so the extra roll is not needed. Please return any unused plaster. It is recommended everyone involved watches this video completely before beginning the process. Watch it twice if needed. Whatever it takes for you to fully wrap your head around the whole process. Even then, I highly recommend having a laptop or tablet available so you can follow along. Simply start and stop as you go. Keep in mind, these are custom shoes. So while this video in its form is sufficient for most people with no alterations or changes, there are many cases where special tweaks to the process need to be made. So don't be afraid to reach out to us before you begin with any questions or concerns. First, we need to set up the footbed. You will notice that it is adjustable. Using a metric ruler and the bolts, measure from the floor to the bottom edge of the footbed to set the pitch of the toe and the heel. Their measurements are listed on the footbed and differ slightly for cycling or speed skating. These measurements will be good for most people, but really are just a starting point. Some customers may require something different or just feel they would like a little less or a little more of something. Minor adjustments on your own are fine without clearance from us, but if you feel you need to make any large adjustments, please reach out to us first to discuss. Place the foam on the footbed and be sure that the bottom side is facing down. Now before we start working with plaster, we need to get your body and footbed position set up first. Once set up, some people will put tape on the floor to mark or even tape the footbed in place so things don't move around. Become familiar and comfortable with your position, and if you have a helper, be sure they are familiar as well. This will help with noticing errors along the way. When you place your foot on the foam, you want to be sure that the inside of the ball of your foot is lined up with the hinge seam on the adjustable footbed. Be sure you are sitting far enough forward in the chair and make sure the height of the chair is appropriate so that the full weight of your legs are allowed to press down on your feet. Position the footbed so that your forward knee position is correct for the shoe. For cycling shoes, if you were to draw a line directly down from your kneecap, it should intersect about where your toes connect to your foot. For speed skating shoes, it should be slightly farther forward, about the middle of the toes. Again, this is really a starting point and can be adjusted slightly for each customer. Typically what we are looking for is some slight forward angle on the Achilles when looking from the side, and slightly more on speed skates. When looking from the rear, the Achilles should be vertical, 90 degrees from the floor, not leaning to the outside or to the inside. Just do your best to keep it nice and straight and vertical. There are some cases, especially with older cyclists, where this is impossible and just unnatural. If you are someone whose body mechanics tends to push your knees out bow-legged style, we may want to let the knees sit out some during molding, but we will likely have discussed this before you begin the process and have a game plan. Once you have your position set, try not to move your butt position and only lift up your leg to apply plaster. This will help ensure everything goes back into place. Put the gloves on and apply the petroleum jelly to the entire foot and ankle. Use the paper towels to clean as much excess jelly off the gloves as possible. Lay the metal strip on the top of the foot. This acts as a reminder so you don't forget it. 
open one roll of plaster and allow about four or five inches to hang free. This will make the edge easy to find. If you forget to do this, it's almost impossible to find the edge on the wet plaster. Submerge the plaster roll for about three seconds, remove and gently squeeze out the extra water. Place the metal strip on top of the foot. You will notice that the end of the strip is kicked up. This is so it can be located under the plaster later. The strip should start about where the toes connect to the foot. Place the plaster over the strip starting up at the crook of the ankle. While holding the plaster and strip in place, lift up the foot keeping the foot and leg in that same 90 degree position. Do not point your foot. You want to wrap the plaster with your leg and foot in the same general position that it will be in when the everything's set back down. Begin to wrap around to the heel, do this three times, and then begin to widen the wrap. Notice how I do almost a figure eight pattern, alternating from ankle to heel. You want to try to have a minimum of three layers of plaster at all points of the molds. This will help ensure that they have enough strength to be removed later without buckling. Wrap the plaster up onto the ankle about one inch above the inside ankle bone. Once the ankle and midfoot have enough plaster, begin to wrap down to the toes. It is very important not to wrap the toes tightly. In fact, if possible, it's best to leave them very loose, even baggy. You will be able to massage the plaster against the toes later once the foot is in place. But if you wrap too tightly now, it's very difficult to spread them back out. Wrap off the end of the toes about an inch or two and wrap the extra plaster up on top of the toes. Then begin to ma massage the plaster to be sure it gets milky all over and try to massage any air up and out the ankle. Next, place the foot back down onto the footbed in the correct position. Be sure the inside of the ball of the foot is lined up with the footbed seam. Check your body position at this time as well. Now grab the toe area and try to spread out the toe box to be sure there's no binding. Begin to massage the foot again, making sure that the foot, leg, and body position is correct. At this time, if there is a lot of loose plaster in the toe area, you will be able to massage and bring the toes together if needed. Do not squeeze the toes together. If they seem to be spreading really wide with space between them, just begin to work them together naturally as the plaster starts to firm. If you are molding yourself, do your best to keep position while doing all this. But don't worry if you are moving around a little bit. You have time. The plaster will take a while to begin to set. As it sets, it will become easier and easier to reach down without messing up. Once the plaster begins to firm up, sit with good posture and continue to let the plaster harden. Setting times can vary wildly depending on where you are. Hard or soft water, humidity, and even elevation will affect this. Once it begins to set, you will typically have anywhere from 3 to 20 minutes of working time. If things are going slowly, you can use some paper towels to dab out extra water. This can help speed up the setting time. Every couple minutes, tap the molds to feel how they're doing. As it's setting, we need to plan the ever important cut along the strip. You want to be sure you wait long enough, but not too long. If you try to cut too early, you will know, because the blade will snag the fibers and will not cut smoothly. If you wait too long, it can be difficult to cut and you risk puncturing the metal strip because you have to press so hard. So just be aware and try to time it correctly. The plaster supplied in these kits is a relatively slow setting version, so the window to make this cut is generally quite long. Do not pick the mold up to make this cut. Leave it in place. You should be able to see the kicked up edge of the metal strip under the plaster. You can see here how my cut went very smoothly. Keep making passes and be sure you have cut all the fibers. You will know they are cut when the blade slides smoothly along the metal strip. If you do feel snagging or uncut fibers, you need to take your time and be sure to cut them. This is one of the most common mistakes I see. Uncut fibers will make removing the molds very difficult. Be sure you start with a brand new, very sharp blade. This will make things much easier. If you are molding yourself, it is easier to cut from the bottom up. If you have a helper, they will want to cut from the top down. Once the plaster is cut, do not move the foot. Continue to let the plaster set until it becomes very hard. When you feel it is fully set, pull out the metal strip and lift up your foot. 
feel around to see if there are any thin areas that need to be patched. If so, use the supplied extra plaster patches. Quickly dip them in water and massage a bit to get them milky before applying them. Set the foot back down and let set. These will typically set quicker than the main plaster did. Once any patches are set, carefully spread the mold open. Do this with the foot still down on the footbed. Once you get it spread about one inch at the top, lift your foot up and spread wider while you work your foot out. Take your time and do your best not to damage or buckle the mold. Once removed, squeeze the mold back together and use the electrical tape to close the mold at the top. And there you have it. Repeat this process for the other foot. Once complete, before drying and packing up, if you have any concerns with the mold, send us some quick photos or videos of them. We can typically tell just by looking if they are suitable for production. Even if your molds don't look as smooth and pretty as the one I just demonstrated, it does not mean it's useless. As long as the position is correct, most likely I can make it work. I can always smooth out bumps or fill in finger impressions, but correcting position errors is a whole different story and usually impossible. So it's better to catch something before you ship the kit all the way back to us. I'd rather catch it in a photo and ship you some extra plaster for a redo if needed. Be sure the molds are completely dry before packing up. This is very important. If the molds are packed up wet, the moisture will begin to break down the plaster. Wet molds run the risk of arriving to us distorted. You can use a household oven to speed up the drying process or you can let them air dry for 24 to 48 hours depending on the area you live. The oven temp and time is listed in the description below and on the kit checklist. Also, don't be afraid to ship back the molding kit materials in the same box as the molds. We get a lot of people wasting money sending them in separate boxes. Just pack everything up nicely and well separated with packing paper or bubble wrap and it will be fine. The molds are quite strong once completely dry. Finally, be sure to fill out the work order as completely as possible. It includes questions that are crucial for shoe production. A downloadable work order link is in the description below if you need an extra. And that's going to be about it for this video. Please reach out to us if you have any questions. And if you have not already, please subscribe to this channel and ring that bell to be notified of any future product videos. Thanks, everyone.